the uh, final installment of our series for caregivers, um, a place for loved ones to live, ADUs, and caregiving. Uh, my name is Antron Watson. I'm at the I'm the age friendly director here with AARP Massachusetts. Uh, today, I'm actually being joined by uh, one of our volunteers, Andrea Cordes, who is who is an occupational therapy practitioner with Bay Path University. Um, as you all know, uh, ARP is, is a strong advocate in community, especially when it comes to fighting for our caregivers. Um, over the last couple of years, um, and currently we're still uh, fighting to really get the caregivers tax credit here in Massachusetts. And it's been one of the bills that we've been fighting for a long time to get passed here. And I guess it's happened. Uh, so with that, I just wanna remind you that, you know, we're here to support caregivers. Um, and this is why we're doing this presentation today. Uh, to really talk about um, conversation around accessory dwelling units and how they offer the many possibilities for people of all ages um, to make our communities more livable, especially for our caregivers. So what does it mean to expand your housing options? Uh, it, it means thinking about your home in a new way and looking at its possibilities for housing beyond one family. So take a moment to visualize your own home and think about its possibilities. As you age, is there a space for you to easily downsize to a separate, more accessible space on your property? Do you have uh, an older relative who might need family support as they age? And do you have a space for them in your home? If you don't have a clear picture in your mind, don't worry. In this session, we want to paint you a clear picture of what flexible housing can look like. You may already be familiar with the terms in-law suites, guest house, carriage house, guest cottage, or in-home apartment. These are all common names used for accessory dwelling units or ADUs. Maybe you've been hearing more about these housing options recently. For instance, during the pandemic, Many people look for creative and flexible housing options to allow loved ones to live closer without necessarily sharing the same four walls. ADUs have many benefits for homeowners and their communities. We look at different types of ADUs and discuss important considerations if you're interested in building one. We'll also talk about how you can support their development in your community and provide resources to help you get started. But before we dive into that, uh, I just want to make give you all a reminder that this program is being recorded, um, and we will share it in the next few days following this event. And if you have questions, please put them in the Q and A feature, kind of located across the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you're on a mobile device of some sort, you might have to tap the screen to access where the Q and A feature is. But please put your questions there. Uh, we'll make sure Andrea and I will make sure we take some time to to answer those for you, um, be it during the presentation or when we get to the end. Um, otherwise, um, please feel free to use chat. We want this to be an engaging conversation tonight um, and we look forward to going from there. So an accessory dwelling unit is a small residence that shares a single family lot with a larger primary dwelling. It is an independent living space. It's self-contained and it's own, with its own kitchen or kitchenette, bathroom and living and sleeping areas. In the illustration, there are highlighted exam examples of ADUs, an attached structure on the left and is, as a standalone unit on the right. ADUs can be found in cities and suburbs and in rural areas, yet are often not noticed because they're positioned behind or indistinct from the main house. As you can see in the illustration, because ADUs are built on single family lots as a secondary dwelling, they typically cannot be partitioned off to be sold separately. You might have heard of tiny houses. They're kind of trendy right now. Um, ADUs are not necessarily tiny houses, but they are similar. ADUs are compact, but not teeny. So there are, are more practical options for individuals, couples, and families seeking small affordable housing. They're also known as in-law suites. Guest houses, carriages, carriage houses, guest cottages, um, I kind of said that before, but until the 20th century, ADUs were commonplace. At that time, there were few or no zoning rules. There were also few municipal services or infrastructures like cities, roads, schools, 
trash collection, or first responders to consider. Modern zoning laws take all of these into consideration. ADUs began making a comeback in the 1980s as cities explored ways to support smaller and more affordable housing options within single dwelling neighborhoods. In these photos, we see some examples of ADUs, an apartment above a garage, an ADU attached to an existing house, and two types of converted garages. These photos all show very different kinds of options, but they can all be considered ADUs. In chat, if you'd like, please let us know which number, I guess, of an ADU uh, fits into the character of your current neighborhood. Awesome. Two, all right, I see two, one, perfect. So yeah, I mean, it all depends on your neighborhood, um, depends on the space you have. So that really comes into play. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. So let's watch a short video about ADUs. ADU is an accessory dwelling unit, which is a second dwelling, meaning a second home on the same parcel as another home, but it's much smaller. So it's not just smaller space, it's smaller bills, it's smaller utilities, it's less rent if you have to pay rent. It's certainly less cost to build when you have a smaller square footage. So that's really critical when you're looking at affordability and, and the housing crisis that many cities are facing these days. We're building an accessory dwelling unit in our backyard right now out of two shipping containers. So we're really excited to just sort of have this opportunity to have a small dwelling in our backyard that will allow us to age in place eventually. We can, we can as we grow out of our house, move in there. But our plan initially is to actually move in and rent out our main dwelling to sort of offset costs and to have some supplemental income as well. Our accessory dwelling unit is going to have two bedrooms, a full kitchen and full bathroom and a common space that will incorporate a living room and dining area as well. So, I mean, building a house out of a shipping, a shipping containers, that's uh, really an interesting ADU, but there are many other kinds of ADUs that can really fit into our communities. So as I said earlier, um, we're gonna make this as interactive as possible. Uh, so we have a question for you. Which of these is not an ADU? A, a small studio apartment above a garage with its own kitchenette and bathroom. Uh, B, a converted attic apartment with its own entrance, kitchen and bathroom. Or C, a converted guest house used as a home office without a kitchen or a bathroom. We'll give that a couple of seconds here before we move on. You all are answering pretty quick, so. Perfect. All right. If you answered C, uh, that is correct. Uh, C is technically not an ADU. If the owner adds a kitchen and a bathroom, we'd consider it an ADU. So let's look at some data about housing needs and wants uh, in America today and how ADUs can help meet some of those needs and wants. The AARP Community Survey in 2021 shows us that adults prefer to live in their own neighborhood as they age. You can see some of the survey results here. 79% of the respondents said they want to remain in their community as long as possible. And 77% said, they want to remain in their current residence as long as possible. Communities become a source of support and engagement for residents, particularly for older adults, who have an even stronger desire to age in place. AARP survey finds many adults age 50 and older are willing to consider alternatives such as home sharing and building an accessory dwelling unit. Other surveys show that a majority of Americans of all ages prefer to live in walkable neighborhoods that offer a mix of housing, transportation options, and are close to jobs, schools, and shopping and entertainment and parks. ADUs can play a major role in serving these needs and wants by allowing a greater number of smaller homes in more compact neighborhoods, family-friendly multi-general housing options, 
are important, important and sometimes overlooked components of making our communities more livable, and ADUs can help with these kinds of needs and wants too. So let's watch a video about how, how ADUs can offer housing options to older adults and multi-generational families. You know, I've been here for almost 19 years now. It's the longest place I've ever lived as an adult now. Uh, so it's home. And that's the great thing about, about this neighborhood. You know, there's, you know, I can walk two blocks down to International Boulevard and a 12 minute walk, I can get to uh, BART, which is our heavy rail system here. So it's nice that I can access a lot of things without actually being in a car, which is what I really wanted in a neighborhood. One of the things I think will really benefit of having an ADU from our perspective, it allows us to be able to have, you know, our elder, our family, um, Iris, be able to stay with us and, you know, reduce her costs. But even if she doesn't stay there, it allows us to then provide opportunity for, you know, a younger person that wants to move into the community that helps us to be able to have an additional income, allows us to stay here longer. My mother's very social. She's very active. Older, but not old. <laughs> Young at heart, for sure. So having a space where she can still live her life uh, is important. The more close-knit you have your family, it's usually the better off you are. You know, you have those, those conversations that, that can't occur over the phone, that occur when you have it right here close together. But it's also this uh, uh, a sense of comfort, knowing that they're close and that they need something. You know, if we need something from Irish, Irish needs something for us, we're right here for each other. The option of having her close to us without necessarily being in our space is a wonderful solution for everybody. But it also could be a play that, you know, that allows us as we age, and I do have some health issues that vary up and down, so my work schedule can change, how much time I can work, that provides us you know, additional income, so I have that flexibility of physical, but, but really of, of mental, being able to know that we're gonna bring income in and be able to stay where we really like to be. So that was a, a really good example of how an ADU can provide support and independence for an older family member, but there are many other reasons why people are interested in building ADUs. So that brings us to our next question. Uh, let's get you thinking about you know, some of the benefits of ADUs. Can you guess the top reasons why homeowners said they'd consider building an ADU? Is it A, to provide a home for a loved one in need of care? B, provide housing for relatives or friends. Uh, C, feel safer by having someone living nearby. Uh, D, have space for guests. E, increase the value of their home. F, create a place for a caregiver to stay. Or G, extra income from renting to a tenant. And in chat, while you're, while you're after you've answered, please feel free to share you know, why you would consider building an ADU. Oh, got just about everybody has answered. Oh, wonderful. So if you answered, uh, provide a home for a loved one in need of care, you're correct. Uh, to, just to give you a perspective, uh, the responses ranked in order are provide a home for a loved one in need of care, uh, followed by provide housing for relatives or friends, uh, feel safer by having someone living nearby, uh, have a space for a guest, increase the value of their home, uh, create a space for a caregiver to stay, and then lastly, to earn extra income from renting to a tenant. Um, Antron, we do have a question in the chat. Oh, awesome. Uh, the question is, I thought an in-law apartment could only be rented to a relative in MA. Is that still true? Um, actually, in-law units here in Massachusetts, um, I think it all depends on the municipality. Um, in most cases, uh, municipalities have removed that restriction, uh, but that's something that we'll dive into later uh, when it comes to what are some of the restrictions related 
uh, to, to having accessory dwelling units in your community? Uh, that's a really good question. And, and I hope, you know, we're able to answer that a little bit more later. So we're going to watch uh, one more video here that looks at how homeowners decided, decided to convert her garage into a usable little living space and how she hopes her family will benefit from it. Here in Ashland, Oregon, there are a lot of these ADUs that happen. The rental scene has kind of like it has for the rest of the country been pushed to a difficulty because, you know, people need space. We've got a university here, we've got a big theater here, we've got more people that want to move here. And I think it's part of the, the living culture is what separate space do you have? How do you use it? It offers people a way to add to what they already have. You know, and I think that that just gives you more opportunity, more reason to stay here because you've got you've got some possibilities. And I think also as you get older, things change. You know, so we just moved out of the garage like moments ago, actually. They just last week started to do some of the demolition work. And everybody's got a different story. You know, our hope is that maybe at least for the first year, we can just have friends and family in and out of there and then maybe rent it out you know, but our one and only kid is away at college and she's a freshman. You'll, you'll be able to see it all. Yeah, do you want to see it? Okay, and this is Tom. He's taking stuff away too. All right, girl, here we go. You know, have no idea what's going to happen in the world and have no idea, you know, if my kid is going to need a space to come back to. And we have a small house and we have one bathroom and we've been able to live with that. But to give her a second space possibly to land you know, in between things or, you know, just if she needs help. I think it also keeps us in the world a little bit because, you know, I thought, well, maybe there's a foreign exchange student, you know, that might want to live there. Or maybe there's, you know, I just feel like there, the possibilities have grown about what that space could be for us and for other people. I mean, you think about some of the possibilities she uh, shared there. Um, it's those are also wonderful uses of AD, of an ADU uh, in her respective. So now I'll turn it over to Andrea. All right, thanks, Antron. Um, so I'll just give you a quick background as to why I kind of chose to work with Antron on this presentation. One of the other presentations I do for AARP is Home Fit. Uh, which is all about aging in place and staying in your home as long as possible. So it kind of goes along really well with this ADU concept, um, especially for whether it's for older adults, young families, empty nesters, kind of all of the above, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about um, how people of all ages and lifestyles can make use of these flexible housing options. Um, another reason I kind of jumped on this presentation is I kind of fit into at least two of those categories on the, sc the screen there. You know, I have some older adults in my life that at some point, maybe I want them to live in with me. Uh, my husband and I are going to be empty nesters in, uh, let's see, four months. <laughs> we're very excited about that. So we're thinking about, you know, do we build an ADU on our property? Um, you know, so thinking about all of those things, especially with older adults, if you're thinking about age friendly housing or aging in place, you want to think about constructing your ADU with a universal design feature, things like zero step entry or wider doors, accessible kitchens, accessible bathrooms, um, accessible doorways, all of those things to make it a little bit more universally designed so that really anyone can live in that space, not just uh, someone who's able-bodied going up and down stairs and things like that. Um, you know, individuals who are in need of care, they can reside in an ADU to be near family members, or you can use the ADU to house a live-in aide. Um, that's another option. So your loved one can still stay in the house, but maybe you hire someone who comes in and works with your loved one a few hours a day, and that gives them a place to stay that's right there. Um, 
It can also be uh, a very much more of a, an affordable and comfortable alternative to an assisted living facility or a nursing home. Um, empty nesters can build an ADU and then they can move into it. I think there was a that was a previous video. So people built the ADU and moved into it themselves and then rented out their main house for supplemental income or making whether it's the main house or the ADU available to their adult children. Uh, so families with young children, they can also use the ADU as housing for a nanny or an au pair or a grandparent um, who can maybe help raise the, the, their grandchildren and be assisting um, kind of in both ways, assisting the grandparents, but also assisting the, the young children. Uh, Homebuyers can look for rental income from an ADU to help pay for their mortgage or finance home improvements. Um, Home-based workers, they can use their ADU as a home office or a workshop. Um, any home you, homeowner can use the ADU for guests or housing your friends or loved ones when they come to visit. So lots and lots of opportunities there. All right, we have another video here. Uh, so we're going to look at another couple's considerations about creating a space to help them stay within their community as they age. Several features that are very unique to this space for us. One, very practically, it's the first time I've had all my tools for my artistic work in one spot, which Not makes it- Not my garage. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> um, but also on, on another level, well, we both had been badgering our wonderful contractors to make sure <laughs> that the doors were the right width. We have several friends who are in wheelchairs. Um, we've never been able to invite them to our home because we have a lot of steps. And so one of the things that I wanted to make absolutely certain that this space accommodated accessibility, both for our friends and also potentially for us if one or the other of us needs a more accessible space. So we had a Thanksgiving dinner here just recently and that was when we had our first guest in a wheelchair. We just settle right down to dinner with the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. It was great. So for us, if we, if we live here as we age, it makes it very convenient. It's also just a quieter space that we wanted to actually relieve our, ourselves of, of all of that digital world a little bit. It's walkable from here down the alleyway, two blocks away to get to the center of town, to the community-owned grocery store, coffee shops. The shops there are, and restaurants. There, yeah, I can take the bike path down to the YMCA and swim or work out or whatever and back. The whole area is conducive to, to being able to, to interact with others but also just to get to stuff in town. And I think as we, we age and decide we don't want to deal with the steps in our house and things like that, this will be a, a great place to, to, grad, to phase into how we want to live our lives at that point. So something I really love about what they say in that video is that uh, they made their home accessible to their friends who are in wheelchairs, which they had never been able to do before. Uh, one of the biggest things is, you know, that makes your home not only livable, but also visitable. So people of any ability, whether they're a wheelchair user, a walker user, a cane user, they can easily get into your house and, and visit and move around. So it's, you know, a win-win for everybody, really. All right, so this slide shows um, a little bit more detailed plans of some images that are from an AARP uh, publication called Accessory Dwelling Units, a step-by-step -step guide to design and development. Um, Antron, is that available online? That guy? Uh, yes, that is available on, online. And what we can do is um, after this presentation, uh, we will include it um, as one of the resources in a link. Perfect. Um, so we've got some floor plans here. One is 350 square feet and the other is 900 square feet. So on the left, um, you can see how it works in relation to the existing house. So it's kind of very close by there um, or a little further back, I, I should say. 
Um, but it's got everything you need. It's got the bathroom, the bedroom, the a little deck, actually. Uh, it's kind of kind of nice. <laughs> um, but you'll notice on um there might be less space in the backyard versus more living space. So when you go over to the 900 square foot um, ADU, you're losing a little bit more of your backyard, but you're gaining more space in the house itself. So it's kind of, um, you know, you've got to figure out which one you'd want to have, which would you rather have space in your house or space in your yard? Um, I know I'm personally, I think it's a personal decision. I would personally rather live in a tiny, 350 square foot house and have more yard. Um, but there's definitely people who have a lot of stuff and they want to have that bigger space. Um, and the yard isn't as important. Antron, do you have a preference? I mean, I, I like more space. <laughs> personal opinion there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's totally a personal opinion. <laughs> Um, just to throw in here that um, some Massachusetts regulations, uh, an ADU cannot exceed 900 square feet or 50% of the size of your home, whichever is smaller. And per health code requirements, it has to be a minimum of 350 square feet. So that's why we chose these two numbers. They weren't just randomly assigned. All right. So thank you, Andrew, for, for, for that and really going over the floor plans. Um, one of the things that we're going to look at now is really the different types of ADU designs um, and see how, how they fit, again, you know, in your neighborhood and in, in your current space. Accessory dwelling units, or ADUs, can play an important role in serving Massachusetts housing needs. These small auxiliary units were once commonplace in communities across the U.S. as carriage houses, guest cottages, and in-law suites but they're largely prohibited in much of the country under today's building codes. ADUs can take many forms. They can be attached to an existing home or be a standalone structure. Let's explore some ways homeowners can build ADUs and how they can help older adults remain in their communities. An existing garage offers several possibilities. For example, one owner could convert their garage into a fully accessible apartment for themselves as their mobility changes and have family members live in their original house. Or another owner could keep the garage and build an in-law suite over it as a home for a caregiver or family member. A basement could also become an in-law suite. So could an attic. A homeowner could also build a small standalone cottage on their lot for guests or for a family caregiver if they ever need one and later could become their primary home when they want to downsize or live in a more accessible home. Different communities in Massachusetts are experimenting with changes that allow for new ADUs. Some are considering allowing any kind of ADU to be built, while others are considering prohibiting certain kinds of ADUs. Regardless of how and why they're built, ADUs can help ensure that people of all ages, including older adults, have more possibilities in where and how to live in their own communities. So, you know, as you saw there, there are a variety of ways that uh, an ADU can be incorporated into the design of your home. Uh, there were some detached, obviously, um, converting a garage your attic space, your your basement space, all things to consider. Um, obviously, the the type of community you live in, be it very um, urban, uh, where there's not much backyard space to build in a, a detached unit, um, you know, obviously, you'd, you'd look at some of the other options available to you, uh, which actually takes us to our next question. Uh, which ADU design meets your future needs best? And you should see a poll popping up. A uh, fully accessible detached ADU, uh, an attic apartment, basement apartment, a converted garage, or an apartment above a garage. We'll give that a minute here, give you all a second to answer that. And you can kind of think about this a few different ways. You can think about this like, which one is best for your own personal future needs? Would you be able to get into an attic apartment or in a basement apartment? Do you have the space to convert your garage? Do you have the space to, like Antron said, have a fully detached ADU in your yard? So a lot of a lot of different factors to consider here. Well, we got 
most of the answers. So I'm going to actually share the results with everyone. And it looks like about 75% of you um, said you prefer a, a fully accessible detached ADU. Um, yes. And honestly, I think that's what I would prefer if I was able to build an ADU. Um, how about yourself, Andrea? I would say the same thing. Um, years ago, we actually converted one of the bays of our garage to a kitchen because we wanted a bigger kitchen. Um, so I do know that that can totally be done. Um, we still have one garage left, but I don't know that it's quite big enough to be that 350 square feet. Uh, so it might need to be a little, little fully attached to ADU in our yard there. <laughs> awesome. Um, but something to consider when you are thinking about an ADU for yourself or for a loved one, if that's the case, um, you know, thinking about what is existing in your house right now. Do you have a lot of stairs to get into the house? Do you have a lot of stairs once you do get in the house? Um, do you have a space that you could easily convert and put all of the things that you need to be qualified as an ADU? Like you need that little kitchenette, you need a bathroom. So it can't just be like just a bedroom. It has to be all of those, like a living space, um, kitchen and bathroom as well. So just thinking about all of those different things, a lot of factors. That's great. Thank you so much, Andrew, for that. So, well, I guess we're really gonna get into really about advocating for ADUs in your community, um, which kind of goes back to the question we had earlier around uh, in-law apartments only being rented to relatives, um, which in some cases still is a, is a, is a policy that's in place. Um, but if you're interested in, in how ADUs can help make your community more livable, um, here are some things to consider. ARP supported the Massachusetts statewide, statewide Housing Choice Bill and advocated to get it passed into law. The law allows for local zoning changes to create ADUs. Housing Choice lowers the required vote for a two-thirds majority to a simple majority for adopting or amending any of the following zoning ordinances or bylaws, including by right accessory dwelling units, uh, and whether within a home or in a detached structure on the same lot. Um, and by right means basically you have the right to build an accessory dwelling unit, um, obviously keeping it to code, but you don't have to go through any special permitting or special zoning uh, changes uh, directly with the with your uh, municip municipality. So if ADUs are not allowed in your community and you want them to be, you need to ask an elected official or a local department of zoning and planning for information about how the codes can be updated. Then get organized and start advocating. ADUs can fit in every community, but zoning laws need to change. Changing zoning laws isn't a simple process, but it's not impossible. Each city and town in the Commonwealth must take an affirmative action, a uh, vote with a simple majority to allow ADUs by right in that community. A good first step is to talk to your neighbors about, about how allowing zoning for ADUs would help your community. As you've, as you've seen, ADUs can offer older adults and homeowners of all ages some real benefits. Older adults can become champions for ADUs. You can start to participate in local planning efforts about local zoning laws and regulations. The ADU section of the community's zoning code needn't be, need not be overly complicated. It just needs to establish clear, objective, and fair rules. It should provide clear answers to questions like, who is eligible to build an ADU? Who, how can ADUs be built? For example, can they be new construction, as existing structures, or both? Should there be any restrictions on the number of ADUs allowed in a given area, such as a lot, block, street, or neighborhood? What are the parking rules? What use and safety standards need to be followed? What are the design features that need to be included? And what are the needs uh, for really keeping it as a part of the character of the neighborhood? Um, and obviously th this all kind of plays into, you know, what, how do you feel, how you feel about accessory dwelling units in your community um, and what is most beneficial for everyone, um, anyone who actually pursues uh, moving forward with an ADU. All right, so if you're interested in building your own ADU, there's a lot of things to consider, like we've talked about already. 
Uh, there's two kinds of barriers individuals might face when building an ADU the building process, number one, and financing. So if you've ever done any kind of contract work on your home, whether it's just renovating a bathroom or putting in a ramp, there's a lot of, you know, paperwork that is, in, in, is involved with the building process and finding a contractor and all of that. So you have to consider that and, and as well as financing. Um, you know, there's a hurdle to overcome when you find an architect or a contractor. Uh, they're often, you know, booked out months in advance, so you have to start that process sooner than you think. Um, but they can help you with the process of doing all the permits and the actual building itself. You re it's really worth the effort to research these kinds of professionals. You know, maybe talking to someone who's already had done, uh, um, had work done on their house or had an accessory dwelling unit built. So finding out who their contractor was, who their architect was, and maybe, you know, getting some reference checked. Um, reaching out to local architect associations, again, talking to neighbors and friends about builders they've used. You're, you're always going to know someone who knows someone, right? Um, in terms of financing, you want to talk to a mortgage lender about some finance, financing options that are available to you. Um, some communities actually have financial incentives for building ADUs, so it's worthwhile to check those kind if those kinds of programs exist in your community. Um, you know, some options for financing, they could include taking out a first mortgage, uh, maybe doing a home equity line of credit loan or uh, a renovation loan, such as the Department of Housing and Urban Development. 203k loans, those sound very specific. Um, but you know, do some research, look, look into different financing programs, because um, there might be one out there that fits exactly what you want to do. So here's another question for you. How many of you have worked with an architect or a builder before? Um, you know, I know, like I was talking about having my kitchen, um, or my garage converted into a kitchen, that was a process to find an architect. Um, it took us probably six months just to find somebody who was able and, you know, available to do the work for us. Let's see. Uh, got some pretty good answers coming in already. So All I'm right. gonna go ahead and uh, end the poll and I'll share the results. And Andrea, please, please tell us, you know, especially for the folks who, haven't worked with an architect or builder before, what are some things that they should consider when doing so? So definitely, um, I asked for references. Um, I liked to hear from other people that they were happy with the work that the architect and the builder did. Um, so that's a good thing is if they're if they're willing to give you a few references, um, you know, they know that they're doing a good job. Uh, I would also shy away from people who say they can have it done like that you know, <laughs> like you want, you want the work done in a timely fashion, but you also want it done well. You want it, you know, quality work, you need it to be a, a structurally sound building. Um, definitely make sure that they're willing to pull all the permits that you need and um, work with you about incorporating things that you're interested in having, but also what needs to be there for, for code purposes. Um, and be patient. They will call you back. <laughs> excellent. That's all excellent feedback. Um, and I know, you know, during the, one of those presentations, you typically do our home fit program. Mm -hmm. um, I believe there's a checklist for a contractor. There that, is. Correct? Yes. Um, so maybe we can include that in um, at the end as well. So the AARP um, home fit website has multiple different checklists that you can print off. Um, there's even a few that are like reference check. Um, sheets so you can you know find your own um refer or, you know use the 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 forms to kind of document yourself what you hear from the references that you're given from these contractors so this slide shows a couple of successful um ADUs across Massachusetts. Uh, in Salem, the city council adopted an affordable ADU ordinance based on best practices and specific input from the community, and they offer a grant to help fund construction. So if you live in Salem, drop it in the chat. That's, you know, great for Salem. Um, 
And also my daughter lives out in that area. So maybe I should move to Salem. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Got me thinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in Arlington, a group of citizens led the change or led the charge with educating town meeting members, uh, which led to the approval of an amendment to the zoning bylaws. So like Antron said earlier, you know, talk to your town officials if you notice that your bylaws don't allow this yet. Um, there could be there could be something in the future if you, you know, talk to them and, and give them the data and things like that. Um, there's a lot of several um, other towns and cities that are currently in the process of re reviewing their current ADU bylaws. Uh, so definitely talk to your planning department, learn about the ADUs in your community. Um, there is a website that I don't know if you want to drop that in the chat, maybe, um, where there is a list of AD where ADUs are permitted for um, the state of Massachusetts. It's uh, that backyard, backyard ad. I wanted to say backyard dad, but it's not <laughs> backyard ad US. Um, they've done a pretty good job of capturing where these, where um, these towns are and what the rules are for what's permitted and what's not permitted. Um, so yeah, the, the link is in the chat. But um, these two uh, little apartments here, I just wanted to point out, or it's, um, it looks like the apartment is probably not the most accessible unless you can get in through the garage and maybe um, that's where the main living space is. But you want to just make sure that when, like, you know, I've said before, if you're building one of these things and you need it to be accessible for, you know, future purposes, make sure it's, it's got that um, zero step entry for sure. That's awesome, Andrea. Thank you for really pointing that out about that, but the pictures and making sure the unit is accessible mm -hmm. um, and meets your needs. Um, so as we've mentioned throughout the presentation, there are a number of resources that are available to you. Um, ARP has really made an effort of creating these publications that are user friendly um, and really explain, you know, what accessory dwelling units are. Uh, the first one you'll see here is the ABCs of ADUs which is a 20 page introductory and best practice guide for how towns, cities, counties, and states can include ADUs in their mix of housing options. Uh, that guide is, is extremely useful, um, especially when you're, if you're, you're leading the charge or leading the effort in your community to really educate your, your neighbors on what an accessory dwelling unit really is um, and, dispel, and dispelling any of the myths that oftentimes are associated with um, accessory dwelling units. Uh, an initial, uh, another uh, uh, publication that is also very helpful is the Accessory Dwelling Units, a step-by-step -step guide to design and development. Uh, it's a design catalog that contains information about financing and budgeting for an ADU project, as well as visuals to show how ADUs can be easily designed to serve people of different ages and abilities. Um, you know, the, the ARP website is, you know, a great way to stay informed about housing issues, especially ADUs. Um, the website for that is aarp.org slash ADU. Um, you see that across the bottom of the screen there. Um, it's dedicated specifically to accessory dwelling units and includes the links to both the accessory uh, AD, ABCs of ADUs guide and the step-by-step -step, uh, guide to development, as well as other publications that are more directed to municipality leadership, so your town planners and whatnot especially if they're looking at revising uh, the language uh, for your accessory dwelling unit bylaws. So I see we have a couple of or a question that came in or maybe, did I see any questions? Not I yet. think those were all um, comments about, you know, why people had joined, um, joined the presentation. Um, some folks you know, we're looking for themselves. Some are looking for their adult children who maybe have some mobility issues. Um, but yeah, we're happy to answer any questions. You can either do it in the chat or the Q and A. Either one is fine. Perfect. Yeah, thank you for that, Andrea. You know, I, I saw I saw the one there about um, someone who has an adult child living with them currently in their basement, um, who's caregiving. Uh, I'm assuming for an adult child. Uh, so you know, this is this, these are those opportunities. Um, I'll say in my experience, uh, going around the state and hearing from other communities, um, that has that's one of the main issue or one of the main reasons that uh, member or individuals or residents 
want to have the bylaws updated. Um, I believe there was um, out of Dedham, uh, there was a resident who was trying to build a uh, in uh, ADU for his um, son, uh, but he had to go through several special permitting meetings, um, and I think it took him over two or three years before he was actually able to be approved uh, to build a unit on his property. Uh, so this is why you know ARP is really looking at accessory dwelling units and hoping to encourage communities uh, to make changes uh, so that it's easier for 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 residents, especially those caregiving um, as and others who are looking to downsize. Uh, you know, it's an option for downsizing um, and really helping older adults and people stay in communities is what it's about. Um, but please, any other any questions um, or comments at, at that, please add them in the chat. We do have another question. Is each city and town independent on the issue of approving ADUs? Yeah, that is correct. In Massachusetts, um, all 351 cities and towns are very independent and um, have to make the decision on how they would like to address accessory dwelling units. Um, that's one of the things that's, that's how Massachusetts works. Um, I think as far as on the state level currently, um, the housing choice bill was the best we could get at this time uh, that really removed that barrier of zoning changes requiring that super majority, you know, requiring that two thirds vote uh, to, to really uh, allow for zoning changes. So, you know, now it's a simple majority. Um, oftentimes you'll see this issue come up at town meetings um, where they want to pass or update the bylaws on accessory dwelling units. So uh, so to answer your question, yes, it is. And each city and town is very independent on the issue of approving ADUs. And she's also asking um, who she should ask for at the town hall to get this information. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's an excellent question. Um, you want to talk to your town planner um, and or the zoning board, planning and zoning board, uh, depending on who, who, who it is in town that deals with that. Either one of those two should be able to answer that question for you and uh, direct you to the right place. I know in our town, um, we definitely have a town planner um, who's who's pretty easily accessible, actually, in the town, the main town office. I live in a smaller town in Western Mass, so it was easy to find the right person. Um, I don't know if it's a bigger city, it might be more difficult to get an appointment with that person, but maybe they have... Uh, an administrative assistant who can help you. <laughs> that is true, you know, but I think it's being persistent um, mm -hmm. and, and reaching out to whoever you can. Um, I, you know, another resource in community um, is your Council on Aging. Um, they, they're they typically very connected um, and can always point you in the right direction for uh, getting you the answers you need um, in relation to supports and or accessory dwelling units in this case. I'm going to pause for one more moment to get people to put any more questions in. There's some, been really some excellent questions so far, so thank you. Definitely. Ah, another question. Are there federal programs that provide support for building ADUs? Um, that's an excellent question. I honestly don't know if there are any federal programs specific for uh, building ADUs. Uh, Andrea, in your in your um, studies with this, have you come across any? Yeah, I'm not sure that I have. Um, I would say it's worth a Google, right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Do a search, and and you never know what you can come up with. Um, yeah, that's that's an excellent question. You know, I I would assume with some of the different variety of home loan options out there. Uh, there may be some support that that could help you with building an ADU in that regard. And I would also say if if it's something that is for a family member, you might you might be able to get more funding rather than like I know some of the videos we watched, the folks were building their ADU for like an income property. There may not be as much federal assistance there, but if it's for like caregiving for an adult child or um, an aging parent or something like that, there might be more opportunities out there for that. There are a lot of grants out there for like building things like ramps on your existing property, but I'm not sure about specific ADUs. 
Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. Um, and and I, I guess to if you're if you are googling it, um, I would definitely start with the housing and urban development site. Um, you know, which is a federal federal page. You know, searching on their their site to see if there is anything specific to accessory dwelling units, uh, which may be able to help you out. I think you literally just answered her question in chat, actually. <laughs> ah, good. Good, good. Awesome. Well, you know, with that, I want to go ahead and, you know, wrap this program up. And I want to say thank you all uh, for being here today. I, I hope we hope you really enjoyed the presentation. Uh, we covered a lot of information here. Um, I just saw another question pop in, so I, I'm going to stop real quick. Um, the the question was a housing the housing choice bill was approved, which allows for zoning changes to happen based on majority of the vote. That is correct. Um, as far as when it comes to town meeting, relate with bylaw changes related to zoning changes, it can now be a simple majority. Um, previous to that, the the by the, the housing choice bill changing, um, it required a supermajority, so a two thirds vote. Um, so in some cases, like cities, it was two thirds vote of the city council to approve it, um, and obviously at town meetings and on another locations, it is now just requires a, a simple majority. Um, but as I said, you know, I really, you know, we hope accessory dwellings are small residents that share single family lots with a larger primary dwelling or within the main structure. Uh, ADU units offer you and your community the benefit of flexible housing options. Different types of ADUs, detached, attached, basement, attic, et cetera. I mean, remember to take into account you know what? What's going to meet your needs um, as you as you age, and and if you are using an ADU, what does it look like? Uh, how can you support their development in your community? Um, as we said, talking to your town, figuring out what is the current status on accessory dwelling units. Uh, reach out to the town administrator, uh, the zoning and planning board to to figure out what what are we doing about accessory dwelling units? How are you making it possible for us to build these? And and what what does that process look like? 